Summer officially arrived in Pennsylvania last Friday just before 8 p.m. local time, which was just before midnight universal time. That's the time at the prime meridian in Greenwich, England, four hours ahead of Eastern Daylight Time. Not since 1896 had the June solstice been on the 20th. It's almost always on the 21st. Now on the June solstice, the Earth is at the part of its orbit where the direct rays of the Sun are as far north on Earth as they ever get, 23 and a half degrees north of the equator at the Tropic of Cancer. There, the midday sun is right overhead on the first day of summer, and north of there, it's as far above the horizon as it ever gets during the year. Nearly all of Pennsylvania sits between about 39.7 degrees latitude on the south, the Mason-Dixon line, and 42 degrees on the north. So the state is between 16 and 18 and a half degrees north of the Tropic of Cancer. So the closest the sun ever gets to being right overhead, which is what happened on the summer solstice, is between 16 and 18 and a half degrees from the vertical, depending on where you live. So along or near the southern border, places such as Uniontown, Waynesboro, or Hanover, the midday sun got about 74 degrees above the horizon on the first day of summer. While along the northern border, north of Route 6, say in Bradford, Sayre, or Oswego, it was more like 71 and a half degrees above the horizon. The word solstice comes from Latin and translates to sun standing still. And to see how this applies, we need to track the angle of the midday sun above the horizon over the course of the year. And here I've done that for State College, kind of the middle of the state. Now look near the first day of summer, in the days just before and after the solstice. There's really not a lot of change in the angle of the midday sun. The difference between, say, June 1st and June 20th is only about one degree, pretty much imperceptible to the eye, and kind of lending the impression that the midday sun is standing still in the sky. It's a lot different around the equinoxes, however. Look near the first day of spring in March. The angle of the midday sun is changing much faster from day to day. For example, the sun's about eight degrees higher in the sky at midday on March 20th than on March 1st, and that's a difference you would really notice. A more, shall we say, down-to-earth way to track these seasonal changes is by using the length of your midday shadow. So let's do this in central Pennsylvania, and I'll start with the summer solstice. The sun's a little more than 70 degrees above the horizon, and I'll use, say, six feet as a height. Your shadow will be a little less than two feet in length, the shortest of any time of the year. In fact, the ratio of your shadow length to your height is about one to three at the latitude of Pennsylvania at midday on the summer solstice. And now let's do this for the winter solstice, when the midday sun is just about 26 degrees above the horizon. Then your shadow will be more than 12 feet long, and the ratio of your shadow length to height is about 2 to 1. Now one consequence of the high sun angle this time of year is long days, and indeed for about a month from around June 6th to July 6th, daylight in Pennsylvania is more than 15 hours long. How much of that will be sunshine this weekend? Fred's back with the extended forecast next.